this morning we thank God for the opportunity to come to us uh, thanking Bishop and Pastor Alice for giving us this opportunity that we can serve the Lord in this sanctuary we also thank the pastoral team for affording us the opportunity also that we can come and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. We also want to thank each one of you that you have created time so that you can be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, David says, I was happy when they told me Let's go to the house of the Lord. I don't know whether you are happy that you are told to come to the house of the Lord. Or you just found yourself in the house of the Lord. And even if you did, uh, we thank God that you are in the right place. My name is Moses Waweru. And I thank the Lord. I'm a father of two. And I bless the Lord for this far. He has been a good God to me. Celebrate our interpreter this morning. It's not an easy job to be an interpreter. I'm one of them. And I know it takes the hand of God. So we bless the Lord. This morning as we have gathered, I know you know you know that we are celebrating 40 years of the existence of this ministry. And in that celebration, maybe some of us and maybe you are there and you're asking yourself, what is there to celebrate? What are they celebrating? Because maybe you just came the other day. Or maybe you have not picked anything that you need to celebrate. But we want to thank God for all of us. Because as we go through today's uh, uh, discussion, we will find our space of celebration. Or we will find the reason why you should also celebrate. And therefore, tonight, uh, this morning, I will be looking at the benefits of thanksgiving. Benefits of thanksgiving. And I know we know because we have been th giving thanks often. You have thanked many people. And maybe sometimes you wonder what next. But, but I would want to bring to us this morning the genesis of the word thank, thanksgiving. We understand the Bible was written in many languages. But the original language of the Bible was Greek. And therefore we pick the word that is thanksgiving in Greek. That word is called Eucharisteo. That means to be thankful. And this word is a verb. Uh, Eucharistos would mean that I am thankful to God for the many things that he may have done. But that word is made up of two words. The first part of it is eu or Eucharisto. Uh, u, in Greek we say eu. Uh, it means good. And the other part of the same word, it is charis. And charis means grace. And what all this means, it means acknowledging that God's grace works well. It means that God's grace works well. For our, uh, for our eternal gain and his glory. So to give uh, thanks then it would mean 
Thankful for God's good grace. It would mean being thankful for God's good grace. And I want to believe that last time we stood here, we spoke about the grace as a weapon. And we said that the grace of God, which is God's unmerited favor, it makes you to become even when you don't deserve. And therefore, when we come to God and we say we are giving thanks, we are just saying that, God, we are so thankful for your good grace. And I want to believe all of us, God has caused his grace to come upon you. Or the grace of God has carried you from one point to the other. And therefore you cannot say that you don't have anything to thank God for. And when then we acknowledge that, it is to help us know that God is at work in our lives. But we also understand when we study the uh, Greek, one word has so many meaning. That is, their words have tenses. Uh -huh. There are words that have what we will call cases, which helps us to understand whether the word he was speaking to you or the word was said for, or for you. All the word came in out of a, a command. Or the word was just a request. And, and therefore the word thanksgiving it comes from a tense called allist. Uh, which means it's a simple past tense. Which helps us or references a duration uh, or completion of the action. Or it does not contain any reference uh, to duration or completion of the action. From the many things that I have said, I'm saying that thanksgiving cannot just be tied to a specific moment of time. Or can't, you can't say that it was, it's over. I gave thanks and I no, longer, I no longer need to give thanks. So there are moments that we have to keep giving thanks. Because God will continue causing his grace to appear in your life. To help you keep giving him thanks. Every time you come to realize that his grace is at work in your life. And therefore we may ask ourselves, do we need to give, uh, to give thanks? And the Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 17, it gives us a story of ten lepers. And it tells us of Jesus walking to Je towards Jerusalem. And after he had crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee, and there were ten lepers that met him. And from their distance, they said to him, they shouted and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. They went and while they were still on their way, they became clean. One of them, tell someone one of them, 
Tell the next neighbor one of them. He realized that he was healed. He turned around and came back shouting his gratitude and glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet. So grateful. He couldn't thank him enough. And he was a Samaritan. That is a disqualification. Because in terms of giving thanks, this ought to have been people that were, had known God. But uh, for a Samaritan who had no knowledge of God, the realization that something had happened, that grace had come upon him, though he did not deserve, he came back to Jesus. And so this morning, it is possible you may not deserve anything from God. But God's grace is still sufficient over your life. No matter how you are, it may be you were in sin last night. It is possible you may have done so many things and you feel like you don't deserve. But the grace of God this morning is so sufficient for all of us. But the next question was, in the next verse, the same verse, uh, verse 17, and Jesus said, were not ten healed, where are the nine? And in asking this, so, uh, in asking this, he's wondering that where are the others? Because I healed ten of you. But immediately the nine were left there. Uh, the, the moment the nine left, they did not desire to come back. But there is something that happened in verse 19. Because Jesus tells that one person, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is what we call process of getting to know God. You know, coming to God in thanksgiving, it is just the introduction of getting to know God. It's the first step of getting to understand God. I had a moment this week with my son. And in our discussion, we are discussing uh, issues in schools. But he brought something to my mind that I hadn't seen. Because he says, nowadays, some school, there is no, uh, you know, that harassment. But he remembered one of his school, the schools he went in primary school. And he told me in that school, there is no harassment. And his realization was because all parents kind of are equal. And he said it's because parents there, they are all wealthy. And I looked at him and I wondered, do you mean I'm also wealthy? And that's why I took you to that school? Without asking, something came into my heart. That the moment, the many times I have done things for him, he has always said, thank you, daddy. But this time round, it's like he took it a notch higher that I know you are somewhere. I may not know I'm there yet, but according to him, I, he classified me in the class of those wealthy parents. And that made me to think of something. Like every other moment he will come to me asking for something, I have to prove I'm that wealthy parent. Because I'm no longer the parent that he needs to say thank you. I will not only give him something because of just thank you. Because he has realized maybe I'm somewhere. Though I may not know I'm there. But while saying that, this is the exact thing that happened with this one leper. 
that came back to Jesus because he came and bowed before him. A few days before he was saying, son of man, son of David, have mercy on us. And as he left, he was healed. By that alone, he realized there may be much more in this person. And so he came back and upon coming, he was told, son, you have been made whole. You know, every time we come back to God, he has not yet finished with you. He's looking for your coming back that he may complete that which he has begun. There is so much that the Lord wants to do with you. But he is waiting for you not to be satisfied for the little thing he has done today because he has much more that he wants to do to you. That story tells us of grace and the grace that has brought us this far. And in so thinking, many of us are, are satisfied with the small showers of blessing. Yet the Lord has so much in store for us that as we continue coming back to him, he opened the treasures of heaven. No wonder he says, try me. Bring your tithes into my storehouse. Try it me and see whether I will not pour unto you so much that you cannot contain because the Lord has so much for us. Thinking of this celebration, the Lord must have been so good to this ministry. For the 28 years I've been in this church, I have seen the goodness of God upon this ministry. I have seen us move from one level of glory to the other. I have seen the church increase from what it was to what it is today. And when the church may be celebrating, I'm also celebrating the goodness of God. Because when I came here, I came as a young person. The Lord has blessed me in this place. The Lord has increased me in this place. The Lord has expanded me in this place. Because I have continued coming in. I'm here to tell you. I have heard Bishop say this many times. That the Lord does not go through his house. To ask him who he should bless. Because God is no respecter of any man. When he wants to bless you. He will come to you without asking. And always when it happens. You are the one who comes to say. The Lord has blessed me. Come and educate my house. Come and educate my child. Come and educate my car. Because the Lord is in the business of making you to become. The Lord is in the business of increasing you and making you the person that he wants you to be. And he has done it for Bishop. He has done it for this ministry. Who are you that he may not do it to you? God is no respecter of men. He will come through for you. Why is God in so much, uh, or why would God want to reveal himself? Or why would want God want us to give thanks to him? Because the practice of the Bible from the time that Jesus came and he said that the kingdom of God is now a midst man. There is something that he has been seeking that men may glorify him. That he may make us to come to a point of knowing him. That we may reconcile the world back to him. And that we may be able to get to where he is. And therefore for us to be able to understand this. We give thanks that ushers us. Because we are able to see God's grace in every aspect of our life. And for us to be able to see those graces. The Bible is full of examples of graces that God has showered. 
that helped us to give thanks to God. And therefore, the first benefit for us to be able to be grateful to God for his grace is that aspect of acknowledgement of God's lordship. When we speak of acknowledging God's lordship, it's to express appreciation or gratitude for the quality of being uh, that we have recognized or we have identified in him. And you know for God, for you to be able to appreciate God, you have to know what he has done in your life. And when you look at it, then you wonder, is this God? Who would have done such a thing to me? And we pick a story in the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 1 uh, from verse 15 and we see some two women there. We see two women by the name of Shipra and Pua. And these are women that were, had been given some work to midwife the birthing of the, uh, of the Hebrew women. And when it, this, uh, the work was given to them, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, of this story because the king at that time wanted to kill all boys that were born. But when these uh, two ladies were asked to do that, the Bible tells us in verse 17 that the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Number 18, it tells us, the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and he asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? Then the midwives answered the fellow and said, Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. Tell someone, don't be like the Egyptian. Tell the next person, don't be like the Egyptian women. Because something special used to happen. That these women were vigorous. That before the midwives got to them, the Hebrew women had given birth. When you look at that story, for every mother that is here, you have a story of yourself. How many hours you labored? How many hours you had to be injected so that you could wait for your son or your daughter. But the Bible says before the midwives came to the Hebrew women, there was some grace behind it. There was some power behind them. They were so vigorous that they just gave birth. Just like that. When you look at that part of it, the Bible starts by saying they feared God. And therefore they would not kill any son that was born. But the part that is amazing is to see how God works even through some situations that are hard to others. And for a believer like you and me, this is a moment of acknowledging God. Of getting to know this must be God. This cannot be a man's job. This young man was supposed to be killed. But God behind the scene, he gave power to these women. And they just gave birth. In the first service I said, I had a moment to experience such. That one day I picked a lady from this church. Late into the night, and the husband came and said, my wife is just about to give birth. 
please take us to the hospital. And we moved very fast. She screamed along the way. And right after we got to Kenyatta, even before I packed the vehicle to join them, the child had come. Hallelujah. And so we walked in the hospital, not to deliver a child, but to present the child to the midwives so that they could check whether the child is okay. This is the same power that can work behind you. Because for that couple, all the bills were taken care of. By a single act of God, making the child to be born at the reception of the hospital, we had no bill to pay. That is how God would work. In acknowledging God, we are saying, I know, I know that you are behind my life, that you have every good plan and you bring it to pass. That is how God works. So don't fail to acknowledge God. Because the Bible asks us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And it asks, what do you have that was not given of God? What can you do that God can, you can do outside God? At this moment of celebrating 40 years anniversary, we can only look at God and say this must be God who has enabled us to be where we are and there are many other churches that have started and there are nowhere as we speak today and there are no other institutions have, that have started and there are nowhere this moment isn't there something that you started and maybe it has not moved from where it started but when we come here we want to hold on this grace that has brought this ministry to where it is and so because God is well able on the contrary we are told of a story and this is the story of Samuel. And we are told of Samuel as he grew old. In 1 Samuel chapter 8. From verse 19 to 22. It is says, but the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. But the, mm -hmm. then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. Then Samuel heard all that the people said. He repeated it before the Lord. Then Samuel said to the Israelites, everyone go back to your own town. Mm -hmm. This is a story. And people had walked before God. The children of Israel had been with God for a long time. Through the desert, the Lord had provided for them. The Lord had done so much for them. But they got to a place and they looked at other nations around them. And they said to, Moses, to Samuel, they said to Samuel, we want to have a king. But when we think of that story, it tells you something before we go to the verse 19. It says that Samuel was old. And so he appointed his two sons to be judges of the people of Israel. But the Bible says that they did not walk right before God. Because they were unjust. They picked bribes. And they did not use the right measures. And they are for God. All the people of Israel at that time. They looked at these sons. And they said Samuel is getting old. And therefore your sons are not treating as well. We now want a king. You have to give us a king. Samuel went before God. He pleaded with God. But God told him, it's not you that they are rejecting. It is me that they have rejected. So give them what they want. 
in so saying, it is saying that though they had acknowledged God before, they reached a moment and they felt that God was not doing enough and they wanted to do things they wanted by themselves. You know, church, sadly, these are some of our moments in life. This is what Christians sometimes we are. One, we are not right before God. When somewhere, when the Bible says about the sons, they had been invited by Samuel to come and help him. And this morning I want to speak to the sons. In this ministry, when I thought of it, I felt felt like I shouldn't say this. But I need to say it to all of us because we are sons. Our father is growing old and he has invited to come and judge his people. But the people may be saying that your sons are not treating us well. And when I'm talking of sons, I'm not treating others well. I'm not talking of just pastors. I'm talking about all of us. Because we are unjust. We have involved ourselves in bribe taking. We have not used the right measures. And everything else that is wicked. And therefore, we cannot be able to see God. We want to have someone that can help us. And it's possible we are in a moment of saying we want a king. A king that we want to look at. Someone I can talk to. You remember the story of Samuel. And this moment is after Saul had been kicked out of the, from the kingdom. And God had rejected him. And therefore Saul, Saul, Saul comes back to Samuel. And he's pleading with him. He's asking him, who didn't you come with me? And at that time when Saul realized he was rejected, he goes to the median. And he says, wake him up. That we can inquire of them. Every time we miss the mark. Every time we fail to acknowledge God. We get to a point of wanting to have a king. And the king that we want will oppress us. And when that happens. We stop following God. Because we don't acknowledge him. The vigor of bringing forth. The vigor of giving birth. To miracles, signs and wonders. Leaves us. That we cannot do as God wants us to do. Jesus said at one point. Greater things shall you do. If we follow him. He says greater things. Shall you do. And therefore we are the people. We just talked of the sons of the, the manifestation of the sun. And we say that the world is waiting. For the manifestation of the sons of God. In every space that we occupy. Hallelujah. God help us. God help us to be the true sons. That we can bring forth so that God can be made manifest. I link the same to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 27. And this was just before Pirate uh, uh, released Barnabas. And the children on the Pharisees had accused Jesus and they had said that he has come to bring disturbance. But after all the accusations, Pirate looked at everything and he washed his hands and he said, I have nothing to do with this person. And the, uh, the Pharisees at that moment, in verse 25 they say, and they together as a people they said, all the people answered. All the people at that time answered. Maybe like the whole country could answer. And say we don't need Jesus. They said, his blood be on us. 
Damu yake hii mikono ni mwake and our children na watoto wetu and so god our a pirate na hivyo pilato released barnabas akamwachilia barnabas every time we miss walking with god ukikosea kutembea na mungu we make a decision to have barnabas tunafanya uamuzi wa kuwa na barnabas we want to be with barnabas tunataka kuwa na barnabas but i declare this morning lakini nitangaze asubuhi ya leo this is not our portion this is not your portion this is not the portion of your family This is not the portion of the church. No, is it the portion of the ch- uh, nation? The second benefit. Is appreciate God's sovereignty. If you read the book of Psalms, Zaburi, it has a lot of pain and anguish. Ina uchungu na malalamiko. So we like reading that book. Japokuwa tunapenda kusoma. But there are many stories of pain. Lakini panazo hadithi nyingi za David is speaking of some of those stories. Daudi akiongea kuhusu mambo kama yale. He's crying before God. Akimlilia Mungu. And he says my bed is just like it's full of water. Yakoba ni kama kitanda changu kimejaa maji. That are from my tears. Maji kutoka kwa machozi yangu. This book is full of hymns. Ina uh, nyimbo jingi. Poems. Ikiwa na It uh, captures every human emotion. Ikiwa na mambo yote inahusiana na binadamu. Of anger, frustration. Uchungu, kukosa kutimiliza. Fear, loneliness. Woga, uh, upo upweke. Uh, sadness. Uh, uh, kuwa na ile hasira. Uh, uh, And it, also, and it also speaks of blissful moments na mambo pia ambayo yanaonekana mazuri like joy Fura. wonder Kushanga. gratitude shukrani and anything between na mambo mengine this bible is great Biblia hii ni kuu it is widely read inasomwa sana it's proudly cherished inapendwa of all other books uh, zaidi ya vitabu vingine but this bible or oh, this book lakini kitabu hiki reminds us of loneliness inatukumbusha upweke in our struggles inatukumbusha kungangana concerns and uncertainty of life kusoka kukosa kujua vile mambo yatakaa and therefore in summing up everything in that book kwa hivyo anamalizia mambo yote katika kitabu kile that book can also be called tahirim inaweza itwa tahirim kitabu which kile which means book of praise ikimaanisha kitabu cha cha cha, cha uh, yeah it can also be called book of praises oh kitabu cha sifa it is a bible within the bible ni biblia ndani ya biblia because it covers all the major themes of the bible story kwa sababu inaguzia area ama malengo yote ya biblia but the key word in the book of psalms lakini jambo katika kitabu cha zaburi is the word praise ni sifa which is mentioned or appears 20, 221 times. The book is divided into several categories. And I will just pick the part that talks about praise. Because in that portion it speaks of heartfelt gratitude. Thanks the sovereign God of Israel for his person. His word, his mighty works. In both creation and redemption. Well, we understand that. Then we get to realize that when we come and say we are appreciating God's sovereignty. It's because God wants us to move from a point of thanksgiving. Because thanksgiving is just focused on blessings received. Kwa sababu shukrani ni inaangalia tu mambo ambayo umepata baraka expressing gratitude for what god has done yani shukrani kwa kile mungu amefanya but if you are to agree by with all the others in that book for the book lakini ukiangalia kule kwa kidani kwa ile kitabu it focuses on god character inaangalia uh, tabia ya mungu uh, uh, at, uh, attributes yani yale ma, vitu ambavyo Mungu anahusishwa nabo abilities uwezo expressing admiration ikiweza kutamani and worship for who he is na kumwabudu kwa ni yeye ni nani what god wants us to get to Mungu anataka tufikie nini in us to understand the benefits of thanksgiving ya kwamba tukaweze kuelewa uzuri wa shukrani is to move from just saying thank you ni kutoka tu kusema asante to a point of praise hadi mahali pasifa which comes as a result of understand, uh, understanding god's character ambaye inakuja sababu ya attribute 
his abilities and the things that he can do. Every time we understand that, then we no longer had problem, we will no longer have problems with thanksgiving. Because you are not thanking God because he gave you breakfast this morning. You are not thanking God because you have a nice shirt. You are not thanking God because of how you are today. You wake up and look at the heavens and you see the greatness of God. You travel and go to Trukana and you imagine that the same God of Nairobi is also the God of Trukana. And you are able to look at the goodness of God and therefore you attribute greatness. You worship God because when you enthrone God he helps you get to look at your adversaries and say like David and all the other uh, authors of the book of Psalms who are you against a mighty God? Because God is at work in your life. As we continue the Bible helps us to acknowledge the sovereignty of God and that he is able to change one season to the other one because God is at, is at work in our lives. The other benefit because of time is that uh, when we look at God's goodness or grace that is good to us, it gives birth to humbleness and humility. It humbles us and gives birth to humility. In the book of uh, Psalms 124, David captures this well by saying, from verse 1 he says, uh, if the Lord was not on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when the people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The floods would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. But in verse 6, he turns and looks at things differently. And he says, praise be to the Lord. Who has not let us to be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler snare. The snare has been broken. We have been set loose. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. When you get to understand God from that point, it's the moment that you look at yourself and you see where you are, that you are still alive today, that in the year 2024, you have come this far. Then you say, Why it not for God? I would not have come this far. There are many things that I needed to do. But blessed the Lord. He has made us to come this far. And when that happens, the stage that God wants you to move into is when you look at yourself. You don't see yourself. You don't find yourself. Because that's what John tells us in John chapter 3 and verse 24. And he talks of him and Jesus Christ. And he says about the joy that he has. In verse 29. And he says the joy is mine. And it's now complete. And in verse 30 he helps us see. In verse 30 he helps us see. He says I must in, he must increase. 
lazima aongezeke as i decrease na mimi nikaweza kupungua it is when the lord takes you to a place ni wakati bwana anakupeleka mahali and you look at yourself na unajiangalia and when you look at everything that has surrounded you unaangalia vitu ambavyo vimekuzunguka you see the goodness of god unaona uzuri wa bwana you find yourself normal unaona uko sawa you say the lord increase unasema bwana ingeongezeka allow me to decrease wacha nirudi chini in fact when john speaks of it it's not an option he says he must increase lazima aongezeke and he says i must decrease nami nipunguke what is it that you have ni nini uko nayo that makes you to be highly exalted ambaye inafanya usababike kuweza kuinuliwa zaidi what is it that you would have done ni nini ambao ungetenda that you cannot allow people talk ambao huwezi kubali watu wao because you have come this far kwa sababu umekuja mbali it not be the hand of god that you can look at everything I say like Paul when I count everything as done I count everything as done because for the grace of knowing God Hallelujah Hallelujah the ultimate goal Oh the ultimate goal Aha Mungu anayemaliza au ama wa kila kitu all that God does in us kile ambacho Mungu anafanya kwetu for us and through us kwetu sisi na kupitia sisi is that we may decrease as he may increase tukaweze kurudi chini ama ku so every kushuka. time something happens to you ili kama kila kitu kinapofanyika it's not bad to talk about it sio mbaya kukiongelelea but i remember someone said here i think it's bishop said nakumbuka askofu akisema that every time god increases you wakati Mungu anakupanua let those blessings in, uh, push you towards god baraka zile zikusukume kwenda kwake Mungu that you may be closer to god ili kwamba ukaribie mungu and your blessing zaidi ya baraka zako hallelujah hallelujah as i finish the next benefit is when we look at the grace of god that is so good tukiangalia neema ya mungu ambayo ni nzuri sana it triggers true worship inasababisha ibada ya kweli everything that god does for you kila kitu ambacho mungu anakutendea he wants you to get to a place inataka ufikie mahala that you will be bowed ya kwamba utainama you will not look at yourself au utajiangalia because you get to that moment unafikia wakati like ule moses had before god moses alikuwa nayo mbele ya mungu and in the book of exodus chapter 33 na kutoka 33 moses is telling god musa anaambia mungu i want to see you na nilipenda kukuona but god said something to him that is true you will see me but you can only see my glory because no one sees me and lives because every time we get to encounter god we cease to live and you know not uh, ceasing to live it does not mean dying it means we cease to be because we enter into a place of worship where we lift god so high that you no longer exist so in the word of god the children of israel had remained stiff naked uh, stiff naked uh -huh. when they could not obey god and so god would invite moses into the tent of the meeting mungu akawa musa anamleta mungu katika we are told the tent of meeting was smack, uh, done outside the main uh, where the other tents were and so every time moses entered into the tent of meeting the pillar of crowd would come and stand outside there bakawa na ile kama aha Uh -huh. God would come and would talk to Moses one on one. Mungu alikuwa anashuka anaongea na Moses. But we are told of the stiff naked people. They came out of their tent and stood at the entrance. Walikuwa wanatoka kwenye hema zao wanasimama pale. And they looked at Moses meeting God. Wanaonana na Musa akionana na Mungu. And every time they saw that Though they were not good before God. 
kuwa wazuri mbele ya Mungu. They could not stand that presence. Awanke ngojea utukufu ule. They bowed and worshiped God. Walikuwa wana inama na kuabudu. This is what God is inviting us to. Hivi ndivyo Mungu anatualika leo. That he wants us to come to him. Mtakatumchie. And as we look at his greatness. Na ukiangalia ukuwa. As we worship him in what he is doing in our lives. Ah ukiangalia kile anafanya maishani. He wants us to worship him. Anatakatumwabudu. He wants us to get to a moment. Anataka tuwe na nafasi that we can tell him God you need no sacrifice David captures this in Psalms 51 and from verse 16 he says for you do not delight in a sacrifice all I would bring it to you you take no pleasure in burnt offerings my sacrifice oh God is a broken spirit broken and a contrite heart you God will not despise God wants you and wants me to get to that point where our worship can be done anywhere because we keep seeing God's graces we keep identifying God's graces which is to say you keep thanking God every time you witness his hand in your life you lift up a worship and when you do so God says such you will not despise you know over time i have realized that it's not how much i ask of god of my own things it's not how much i put a list it is not how much i plead with him but every time i worship him every time i lift him high he fights my battles he identifies my enemies and he tells me he will contend he will contend with my enemies that which looks impossible it is not impossible before me. It is only impossible to me. It is only impossible to you. When I thought of this coming to this place and speaking to us, the Lord put it in me just to remind you that even the thing that you are going through it is not like he's not able. He is well able to do it for you. He only wants you to hold on and to keep trusting because he is well able last but not least then last benefit i know there could be many but the benefit of getting to know god's grace is it empowers you to trust god for the next territory it helps you to trust god for the next territory David speaks to us of this. Because he tells us in 1st Samuel chapter 17 and verse 34. This was a moment that the children of Israel had kept running before their enemy. Goliath had appeared every morning. Goliath had appeared every morning and had despised the army of the children of Israel. He had despised them. And every time it happened, they were shaken and fearful before God. But David comes into the scene as a young boy. And so he is asking everyone, what is happening here? And some people decided to tell him and he asked them what will be given to the person who will kill this man and he was told possibly they will be given the king's daughter they will not pay more taxes 
ushuru. He will not pay taxes. Atalipa ushuru. They will be exempted from hard labor. Atakuwa hatafanya kazi ngumu. And even the one David thought of that. Aole alipofikiria hivyo. He started thinking of himself. Kaanza kujiwazia. Who is David? Daudi ni nani? What has David done? Amefanya nini? And he remembered. Na akakumbuka. He was in the field. Alikuwa kwenye uwanja. And was for the that for he says. Na akasema. That I was out there taking care of my father's flock. Na alikuwa ninachunga mfugo wa babangu. And every time a lion or a bear came. Na simba ama dubu angekuja. I got a hold of them. Ningewashika. And I torn them apart. Nikawararua. And I took my sheep back. Nikachukua kondo wangu. And from that moment. Toka pale. David said Daudi akasema So shall I do Hivyo ndivyo nitafanya To this and circumstances Huyu jamaa ambaye atatairiwa Who is despising the army of the Lord Amen the rau ya jeshi la Bwana And therefore for us to be able to take our next territory Kile kwamba tuchukue nafasi yetu You need to Amen. look at the graces that have worked in your life Angalia neema iliyofanya kazi maisha What has God done in your life Kile Mungu amefanya Is that God the same Ni Mungu yule The Bible tells us he changes not Abadiliki He is the same Ni yule yule Yesterday, Jana, today, leo, and forever. Na kila, na wakati wote. And therefore, for the reason of that grace, Kwa hivyo neema ile, that works in David's life, ili kazi wakati ule, he dared take the challenge. Ile nafasi. Though the king tried to help him, he said, you know, this man has been a man of war. Mtu ni wavita. You are just a young boy. But David continued believing that the Lord that has been with me, Mungu I nami. want to lift him high. Na and because of that, na ya iyo, I know it's possible for you to take the next territory. Yako ile for you to capture the next territory. You have to summon up Someone up. Au kaweze kujiambia. Ah the graces that have been at work in your life. Ile neema iliyokuwa kazini mwako. As you thank God for the grace. Na ukishukuru kwa sababu ya neema. As you thank God for the his working. Na ukishukuru kwa sababu ya kazi yake. You focus your eyes on. Unaangalia macho yako kwa Bwana. David refused. Daudi akakataa. To pray put on the armor of the king and he got back to the sacred place and he remembered that the Lord can empower anything even the small stones that he picked from the brook the Lord used to them the Lord is waiting The Lord has knows you have something. He has endowed you with a gift. He has endowed you with some wisdom. He has endowed you with some potential. And all that he needs is you to hand over. Then he can make use of it. So that as we celebrate. 40 years. We are saying even the 40 years ahead. You are 20 years ahead. You are 5 years ahead. You are one day ahead. You are tomorrow that is ahead. You can partake it. Because God is at work. And at work in your life. Do you know that God is at work in you? Tell someone God is at work in my life. I refuse to be made silent. Because God is at work in me. To glorify himself. You may be here this morning. And it's possible in your life. Na katika maisha yako. You have not acknowledged God. Haujakubali Mungu. You have not allowed him to be Lord. Haujamkubali kuwa Bwana. Maybe you are like the Israelite saying we want a king. Unaweza kama ni wana wa You are despising the counsel of the Lord. Unakataa hekima ya Bwana. And you want to have your own king. Na unataka kuwa na mfalme. Maybe it's that process the Lord is telling you keep moving. Anakuambia endelea kutembea. And the Lord is saying I will still be with you. Na anakuambia nitakuwa na wewe. Hold on my sister. Hold on my brother. The Lord is at work in you. Are you dependent on the Lord as, uh, as sovereign in your life? Have you made him sovereign in your life? That he will look at everything. But as some you say, uh, as some is you say, that I will make you sovereign in my life. Have you considered 
that unless you come to him you remain condemned but when you come to him he says those that are in me are not condemned what manner of worship what manner of worship have you been bringing before God is it of a broken and a contrite spirit all is just of rip services but the Lord is waiting. Are you discouraged to a point of giving up? He is calling you. He is calling you. He is telling you. Don't give the enemy a foothold. He wants to manifest himself. Things can only get better. As a person, I have gone through some challenges in life. But I couldn't help remembering just not long ago I had been in a place like a pit and I kept wondering how will I get out of here and sometimes I would be on the road and just in a, a bubbling some words I would tell the Lord come through for me remember me Lord lift me up again and that God is faithful. He does exactly. How much are you asking of him? He's inviting you. As the worship leader comes to help us close the service, you could be there. And maybe you are in the many things I have mentioned. And you are saying, pray for me. Or pray with me. I may not be the one that can do it because there is the one who knows you by your name the number of hair on your body he knows them by number he knows every detail if you bowed your head and lift up your hand I don't know which category you fall in but you are saying Lord I want to be grateful I want to accrue. I want to accrue every benefit that has been shared this day. I want to move from one level to the other. Every shackle that is holding me, I break it now. I loosen myself. I set myself free from every work of the enemy with every head bowed with every head bowed if you lift up your heart and you are saying Lord I even don't know you I don't know what they are talking about but I desire you I desire you I want you this afternoon I want to invite you into my life if you are there and you are praying such a prayer if you lift up your hand you will see that hand and we pray with you and from today you will acknowledge the Lord in your life that he will make carry you to the next level you could be there also and you are saying I have nothing to thank God for. You are saying, Lord, I need to see you in my life. If you have done it for others, you have made a way for others, you can make a way for me. The Lord is at work this morning. He is able to make a way for you. If you lift up your hand, we want to pray together. We want to pray together. And thank the Lord for you, for the miracle that he has in store for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank for your people this morning that you gathered them into your house. Father, that you may serve them a meal, our God. And that, Lord, they came in, our Father. You have said that you shall not send your word and that it shall not return to you void. But it shall accomplish the purpose for that which you sent it for our God. This morning we want to thank you for the purposes of your word. You say man shall not live on bread alone 
Someone celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah.